All right, guys, a solo round, one player mode. I am by myself uh, for this episode of Movie Showdowns. Yeah, I know. And we're going to review Spider-Man 3. Check it out. What's up, world? How's it going? My name is Ali Zaka. Welcome to another episode of Movie Showdowns. I'm your host, and what Movie Showdowns is about, it is a movie review series where I and a friend are going to review a movie, and we're going to break the movie down, start to finish kind of deals, and we're going to talk about the movie. We're going to give you a, a grading system, which... It's the elementary school grading system, the you know the educational system, A through L plus and minuses do count. And today it's kind of weird. I am by myself. I am by myself. I am your guest. I am your guest and your host. And before we get started, got to scratch real quick. Sorry, guys. Before we get started, I want to let you know we have a sponsor. Lofty Ground Athletics is sponsoring this episode. Now, what is Lofty Ground Athletics? It is a motivational athletic brand that pretty much their whole goal is to inspire others to go after their fitness and athletic goals. One of my favorite shirts they have is the Conquer Your Challenges shirt, which it is 100% polyester and weighs only 3.5 ounces. So it's lightweight and doesn't hold sweat. I wore this on American Ninja Warrior. I wore it at any gym. I wore it also doing Ninja Warrior stuff. It doesn't hold me back, glides through, breathable. Great shirt, only $15, so check it out on their website. And let's go ahead and get to the movie review. We're doing Spider-Man 3 today, Spider-Man 3. And what Spider-Man 3 is about, it's Peter Parker, who's Spider-Man, Mary Jane, they find together, and they're having problems. They're having relationship problems. I swear to gosh, this movie, before I get to that point, actually, let me just do the story review. So... They're having relationship problems, and Peter Parker trying to find a way to hold together his relationship and be Spider-Man, but all of a sudden, the Green Goblin, Sandman, and Venom are there. Oh yeah, Spider-Man gets his, um, you know, black spider outfit because the symbiote takes over, and Spider-Man becomes a dick. That's Spider-Man 3. That is Spider-Man 3. That is literally Spider-Man 3. Why? So, this movie, the storyline is too much. It's too much going on. Way too much going on. Like, why is the Sandman in this movie? Why is he there? Why? I, I do not know. Also, because I'm doing this episode by myself, I'm not going to do a spoiler review. I'm just going to do it all in one. So, I got to give you the heads up. This will have spoilers in it starting from here on out. And Sandman, they like threw Sandman in because they try to make him a character that shot Peter Parker's uncle. So they try to have him be that character there, and that was his thing. But he was only there because I guess I didn't think they were gonna have a third movie or fourth movie, which they didn't. But like they didn't have to try to wrap this up like this. They literally, they could have broke out each character. They could have done the Green Goblin return, the Green Goblin Jr. They could have done Sandman. They could have done the Venom. The Venom. I like that. Could have done Venom in three separate movies. Like, you know, four, five, and six. Or three, five, and... Sorry. Three, four, and five. I can't count. If they would have done that. All right, we're good. We're happy. Like, the Sandman should have been the final boss in the last series of movies here that, like, Peter Parker finally found his killer, which found his uncle's killer, which you never find out in the current books. They threw that in there, I guess, because they thought it was going to run out. I don't know. This movie had a lot of stuff going on. It had Eddie Brock in it, who was Venom, just for no reason. And then he's having to be in the same place as Spider-Man for no reason. And he just becomes Venom. In the last 15 minutes of the movie. Why? The best part of this movie to me, the um, best part of the storyline was the Green Goblin storyline. I think that right there, they could have just made a whole movie about that. Peter Parker, Mary Jane, and Harry Osborn and the Green Goblin. But no, they tried to shoehorn him in there. 
And I like the Green Goblin outfit in this one. I thought, dude, that's so bad, eh? He was like a ninja assassin kind of style. That was his style. And his glider was cooler than his father's in the first one, than William Defoe's Green Goblin. Like, Harry Osborne's, um, I'm now forgetting his name. God dang it. Harry Osborne, James Franco's Green Goblin. I, I love the way his character was drawn. I love the character design behind it. But he, he could be a lot cooler character. They made him, I don't know. I don't know. And kind of sum it all up, this whole series is literally a romance movie with superheroes in it. I, I cannot. I cannot go even further than that. That's that is the pure premise. So your girlfriend, your wife, like, hey, let's watch a romance. Let's watch a romance movie this weekend. I got what I got three for you, Spider Man, and get ready to go through the, all the drama because Peter Parker is having a really good time in his life right now. Everybody is accepting Spider Man as a hero, and his his superhero career is going off, and he's like happy, go lucky. He got the girl of his dreams. He got all this. He's excited, but. Being a bad boyfriend, because Peter Parker is still selfish. The first three movies hasn't taught this man nothing. I guess the, the first two movies, the first two movies hasn't taught this man nothing because he's still selfish. Like he hasn't realized that Mary Jane Watson's actually not that good of a singer anymore. And she's her peak with Spider-Man 2. She's declining, declining bad, and and she's going through this like really sad moment because nobody understands her. Nobody don't see her struggle. Peter's not paying attention to her struggle. She's not talking to Peter about it at all. Not, not, not at all. And anytime she apparently tried to talk to him, she ended up talking to Harry Osborne or she just like let him go off on his own. Like she doesn't say, hey, Peter, can we talk about this? You know, I gotta just let this off my chest. No, none of that. No, communicate, no communication whatsoever. This is a bad relationship, guys. This is a bad relationship. Like, bad. I, I don't understand. Relationships are not, I don't say this a movie, guys, but relationships are not made like that. Like, if you're having problems like that in your relationship, you gotta need to sit down and communicate and talk. Peter was about to propose to her and she was like, no one had it. She tried to find some kind of excuse to put her issues off on somebody else. To put her issues off on Peter Parker, put her issues off on Spider-Man, put her issues off on Gwen Stacy, who's in this movie, who in the comic book, she died before Mary Jane comes into the scenario, but for a reason, the movies, the, mo um, the movie makers, the producers, like, the, the writers, like, let's throw her in this for reasons. So, let's break down the characters. We got Tobey Maguire, who comes back as Peter Parker, Peter Parker. He's not Spider-Man, he is Peter Parker, because this movie doesn't really have Spider-Man in it that much. Like, he's literally fighting as Peter Parker. He fight with his mask off so many times in this movie. He is swinging through the city with no clo like, with his, with his, um, mask off. Like, at this point, if people don't know who Peter Parker is in this movie, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. The second movie, I gave it a pass. But now the third one, can you see, like, Peter Parker just doesn't care. He's going to be Spider-Man with, with or without the mask. Um, I don't know. Peter Tobey Maguire did did he did his job as Peter Parker. I had no complaints about him. Besides the whole I'm a bad boy scenes, I was like, I can't take him seriously. I can't take Peter Parker as a bad boy flipping his hair down, being a womanizer, and just no, no, no. And then Kristen Dunst as Mary Jane Watson. Mary Jane's movie, she's there, but like, she's there. I had no complaints with Kristen. I thought she did a solid Mary Jane Watson. James Franco, who's kind of becoming one of my favorite characters in the series now. Like, his Green Goblin was really cool. I love the way he did it. Uh, he acted like the kid, you know, when he got hit and got his uh, amnesia in the movie that happens. He acts like the kid that's like back in high school, early college kid. Like, he plays his character really well. I enjoyed it. Um, who else we got? Thomas Hi Thomas Hayden Church. Or Hayden? Hayden Church. He's Sandman. Didn't really have much of much of Sandman in the movie. To Toby Grace. Topher Grace. 
Oh, it all makes sense now. So, um, oh, this is a side note. So I watched the Boondocks, and there's a line in the Boondocks that Uncle Ruckus, Uncle Ruckus says about Spider-Man 3, and I thought he messed up Toby McGuire's name. I didn't know Topher Grace was Venom until now. But yeah, um, huh. Okay, I didn't know his name. This all makes sense now. Full circle. But anyway, Topher Grace is Venom, Eddie Brock. Venom didn't need to be in this movie. He did not need to be in this movie. Eddie Brock could have been in it. Could have been cool. You could have got a cape, like a sneak peek to Venom in the end of the, um, at the end of the movie. Like, I think it should have played out this way, where like Spider-Man was trying to get the symbiote off of him. It should be more about Spider-Man battle, battling the symbiote throughout the movie. And maybe Sandman could have been in it, but Venom didn't need to be in it. Or maybe Spider-Man fights. Oh my gosh, this would have been a better movie. This is me throwing stuff out. Sorry, guys. Okay. So, Mary Jane, Peter Parker, they, they want to build that romance up so much. Let you know, this is a romance movie. Put that romance up so much. Having their issue, they try to talk about it. doesn't go well. They're, they're fighting and whatnot. Um, the CBO takes over Spider-Man. Spider-Man becomes black suit, black suit Spider-Man, symbiote Spider-Man. He fights a lot in that outfit, stuff like that. Did he affect his personality? I don't think so. I don't remember that doing that in the comic books or the animated, animated series. But then again, I could be wrong. But Peter Parker had these issues between right and wrong. He tried to defeat the Sandman like towards the end or fight. He gets him in there as a side character or have him and Green Goblin do this epic battle at, battle at the end where Peter Parker's about to kill him. Mary Jane's like, no, it's not like you. Don't do this. And Peter's like, I got it too. Got to fight it. And he's like taking over. You know, take that whole taking over me route. The whole, it's not me. I'm good guy versus bad guy route. And had him at the end strip the suit off of him, get the symbiote off of him as he saves his friend. You know, it... Then Venom could have been around. Then, like, at the end, Eddie Brock could have been a part of it and just been a, you know, a bystander that got caught in the, caught in the, in the battle, and then he becomes Venom. And then at the end of the movie, he had the Venom peer out, jump at the screen, cut. That could have been it. Or the after credit scene. That could have been it. But no. They decided to shoehorn Venom in there, and it just, no. Just no. So... That's pretty much just solid characters. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson comes back, which I really enjoyed him in all three movies. He's probably one of my favorite characters. It's top notch up there in the Spider-Man series. I really enjoyed him. Um, not really much to say about him. Just fun guy, fun character. Uh, J.K. Simmons did a solid job. Props to you, J.K. Props to you. All right. Grading time. I'm doing this by myself. Rating time. Well, before that, should you watch this movie on a Friday night? No. Do not spend your Friday night movie time to watch this movie. Don't spend your Saturday night movie time to watch this movie. Put this on on that weekday, you know, Monday to Friday, that grind. Oh, not Monday to Friday. Monday to Thursday grind. You're trying to get through the week. And you're like, I don't want to watch the new Orange the New Black. Yeah. The new Orange is the New Black. Or watch, um, you know, Game of Thrones. I'm going to watch... I'm going to watch Spider-Man 3. I'm going to put myself through that. Didn't do it. That Wednesday afternoon. And just have it on the background. Literally, I was watching this movie while doing other things. And um, the movie didn't catch my attention. Like, I, I literally sat there working my business. Sat there and worked on um, other things while the movie was watching. I didn't stop. There's movies I can put in over and over again. And, like, start doing something. And then that scene hits. I'm sitting down like, oh my gosh, this is like the best times of the first time. Um, for example, Django Unchained. That movie comes on. I can try to do something else. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to watch Django to the end. Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm going to watch that to the end. The Avengers. I literally did that. I was working on, working on my business, working on another project, and watching The Avengers. And I stopped to watch The Avengers. You know, that's in that movie so many times since it's been out. All right, grading time. Spider-Man 3. D plus? I think that's right. D plus. Because there's was, was so much going on in this movie that didn't need to go on. Like, I, I, can't, I can't rank it higher. Like, the first Spider-Man, solid. 
it gets me through. Um, Spider-Man 2 was really good. I really enjoyed the storyline behind it. This one didn't have a storyline. It was like, we're going to throw all these characters in here because forget you. Like, I, I was confused. The storyline dragged off. I was sitting here thinking to myself, why don't he just tell her? Like, they're not talking to each other. Like, this is, this is, why? Um, things in the movie that like, I caught out, like, really? What? The cut scenes, the... It's just the CGI didn't hold up well. Yeah. 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 It's 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 a D plus for me. I'm sitting there with that. Maybe I'm being generous, but I'm sitting there with that. Um, that's Spider-Man 3 review, guys. There won't be a spoiler review. Sorry about that. Kind of added spoilers in here already, but that's Spider-Man 3 review. Thank you guys for watching. Please tell me what you think of the movie. Please put it in the comment section below. Like, hey, I thought Spider-Man 3 was a better movie than the first two. I would say you're wrong, but <laughs> not wrong. You're, you're entitled to your opinion because it's all it is. But yeah, put that in review and let me know what you think. Also, put in, put in the comment section if there's a movie you want me to watch, a movie you want me to review, see my thoughts on it. Just let me know. Also, please give this movie a like. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the support. And See you next time on Movie Showdowns. Hey guys, if you're watching this episode on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up if you really enjoy it. If there's a comment or there's a topic or something you want me to talk about in the future, please put it in the comment section below. Also, please click on subscribe if you want more videos of Grind Towards Success or Movie Showdowns. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And lastly, you can follow me on Instagram here, follow me on Snapchat there for more daily and motivational tips. And you can watch the next episode of Grind Torch Success here or the previous episode, or you can watch another episode of Movie Showdowns here, which is my movie review series. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And see you in the next episode. Keep being awesome.